Today we're going to kick off our series learning Ruby and Ruby on Rails, but we're going to do so by building out an entire project over the course of the entire series. So in this tutorial specifically, we're going to start out with nothing and work our way through having our project set up and having a game plan for how we're going to tackle the features in our project. So the actual project that we're going to be building uh, over the course of this series is something that I started working on for a conference talk I gave in April, but never actually finished, and that is a meal planning app. If we take a look at the problem that I kind of want to address here, it's that my wife and I, we use a weekly meal plan to help us figure out what we want to buy when we go grocery shopping, but it's actually pretty annoying to come up with the list of things to eat. We have a group of recipes that we kind of cycle through periodically, and they're also kind of seasonal sometimes, but... What happens is we keep thinking of the same ones, so we'll repeat the same recipe over and over again over the course of a month, and some of the recipes that we really like just fall to the back burner because we kind of forget about them. It would be great if I had a way to store all of my recipes and have it generate a meal list for me, and that way I can take that decision that I didn't have to make and build out my grocery list from that. And it would be even better if I could get it to more evenly rotate the meals that I'm eating. Like I said, I did build a little bit of this earlier for a tutorial uh, that I was giving in a talk, and this is built using Elixir and Phoenix as the backend server and using Elm for the front end. I was giving a talk on using functional programming language from top to bottom, but we're actually missing most of the features that I want here. This was kind of just determining how to use Elm and Elixir and sort of talking through the code points there. But what we do need is we need you to be able to sign up and sign in. So you can see I'm already signed in here. I could log out if I needed to. You should be able to delete and edit recipes. And then you should be able to create new recipes. And then I actually never even got to the planning portion of it. This is more just like I hear the recipes that you have. So this is more like a cookbook than it is a, a meal planning service. So... The meal planning side is something that we're going to build that's completely new. I've never actually built it, but we're going to take the concepts that we have here and turn this into a Rails application. To kick us off, I'm going to go through and build out our project, and then we're going to put it in source control, and then we're going to put that onto GitHub, and then we're going to do some of the project management bits. So just sort of talking through the features that we want to build. A lot of this stuff in the beginning I've already shown in a previous tutorial, specifically the using Docker and development tutorials. So I'm not going to explain this stuff nearly as much as I did in that video. So if you want a little refresher on what I'm doing here, just go back and check those out. The first thing that we are going to do is we're going to create a container with Rails installed to use Rails to generate our application in our current directory. So for that, we're going to use docker run dash dash rm dash v, share through our local to usr src. Set our working directory to USR SRC, use Ruby 2.3.1, and then run bash. We need to gem install Rails. And then we want to do Rails new, meal plan. We want to skip a few things here too. So we don't want turbo links. We don't want spring. We want to use Postgres. We want to skip bundle. Actually, I think we want to skip test two. Okay, we can clear out of that. And now if we look, we have a meal plan directory. So we'll go into here and we'll start building out some of the things we need before we can actually get this project up and running. The first thing we're going to create is our Docker file. This is mostly the same Docker file that uh, we've created before. I'm going to do some cuts in here just so you don't have to see me type all this stuff out, but I'll highlight the differences from what we've seen in the past. All right, this Docker file has a few things that we didn't have in our original setting it up for development series, and that is we added Node.js because we need a uh, JavaScript runtime inside of our container. And then we also did this. So this is, I'm pre-installing the Nokogiri gem before we do anything with our gem file. That way, when we modify our gem file in the future, we don't have to reinstall Nokogiri. It'll already be in a previously cached layer. Nokogiri takes a little while to install because it has native extensions. So by pre-installing this and locking down the version, we can ensure that our 
subsequent builds of our images will be faster. Next up, I'm going to create the Docker Compose file. And this is actually going to be exactly the same one that we used in the previous series. So I'm going to cut out for a second and type this up. Okay, take a look at this file. Like I said, it's exactly the same as the one we've seen before. We have a DB service that stores its data in a persisted volume, and then we have an app service that runs our application. We put it into USR SRC app, and we share our ports through as 3000 to 3000, and then we make sure that the DB runs first. As you can see here, we have an env file of .env, so we're going to need that. Okay, our .env file only needs a Postgres user and a Postgres password. We're going to create something new that we have not used before, and that's going to be a .dockerignore file. And this file is just used to say, hey, these things that are in my application, if I share myself or copy myself into a Docker imager container, I don't want you to copy these along with it. These are just bulk that we don't need to have inside of our container. And here we're going to have a .git, which is the directory that holds all of our source control history. We're going to have a .git ignore, which is the ignore file for git. Um, and then we're going to put in things that are just not important inside of our container. So you'll notice that we can actually skip passing through the Docker file, the Docker Compose, and the Docker Ignore, because once it's inside of an image, it's not actually necessary. It's only useful to the client and the server. Okay, and the Rails-specific stuff we don't want to share through would be log, temp, and a dot rake tasks. And these are just uh, log and temp obviously have um, files that are either temporary or logs, which can be very, very large. We don't want to share them into our images. And then rake tasks is just something that's cached uh, and will be generated on both sides anyway. That's about it for the Docker setup that we have to do. The next thing we want to do before we build our image is modify our gem file a little bit. I don't like to have all these comments and extra stuff in here, so I'm going to get rid of some of this stuff. I don't want to use CoffeeScript. We are going to be using jQuery. We're not going to have an API, so we don't need this JBuilder stuff. And we're not worrying about Capistrano right now, and probably not at all. And then the rest of this stuff looks like it's pretty good, but we do need to install Nokogiri and pin it to make sure it matches what we set up in our Docker file. So we'll say that here, and we set it to 1.6.8.1. All right, with our gem file finalized, we are getting pretty close to being done. We need to set up our database config to work between Docker containers, and then we're actually ready to build our images. So config database.yaml, and it's going to be vastly different than this. I'm going to chop this out while I modify this. Okay, after chopping this up, we've set up our default that's going to be shared through with basically all of our environments, with the exception of production, it's going to run on some specified host that we use an environment variable for. Back in our terminal, we can create our database and our application image and container by running docker compose run dash dash rm app rake db create and db migrate. Looks like I have a issue inside of my Docker Compose file. Yeah. If we save that and try again, we should be good to go. All right, it looks like our image is created successfully, so let's spin them both up and make sure we can connect to it on port 3000. So if we open a new tab, go to localhost 3000, looks like we're riding the rails. So that gets us to our initial project creation. Now we'll move on to putting this into source control and doing some actual planning of this project. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to GitHub and we're going to create a new repository. We're going to call it meal plan. It's going to be public. Uh, we're not going to worry about any of this stuff right now. And then we're going to grab this link for add to an existing. So we will copy that. And then over here, we're currently not 
in a repository because we never initialized it. So for that, we'll use git init. You might not have git installed on your system. If you don't, I encourage you to go to the tutorials that GitHub has. So if you just go to guides.github.com, you should be able to find there like getting started with git. And I would say follow that for right now. But once you have that installed, you can say git init from inside the directory that holds our Rails app. And then we'll do git add dot, which just means everything underneath here, and and git commit m, and then we'll leave a message. Okay, so that creates our uh, source control um, setup and our first commit. From here, we're going to paste the uh, commands from earlier. And it says that it updated our tracking. So we can do git remote dash V to see the origin, uh, which is just a, a name of the repository, the server we're going to talk to is set properly. And then when we refresh the page in the browser, we should see it all here. For the actual development of this, we're going to use the new feature that GitHub added recently called projects. We're going to create a new project. I'm just going to call it meal plan development. And then we're going to create some columns. So we want a backlog, which we're going to put our new features into and in progress for features that we're currently working on, completed for features that have been merged into master, and deployed for features that we've deployed into some environment that's accessible outside of just our machine. From there, we're going to create some tasks to cover our bases on the features that we know we're going to need to build pretty early on. So user sign up. User login log out. Allow a user to view, create, edit, and delete recipes. Otherwise known as CRUD. Create, read, update, delete. And then finally, we want to allow user to generate a meal plan based on existing recipes. And that's going to be our most complicated one that we're going to work on. And we're going to do these in the reverse order. So we will organize these in the order that we're going to kind of do them. And then the other thing we can do here is we can convert this into an issue. And then we can give it a uh, more flushed out body. So. I'll do most of these off screen, but just to get a rough idea of like, oh, how would you structure one of these tasks that you would work on in a project? So user sign up, uh, I would write this as, as a visitor of the site, I should be able to create an account so that I can create meal plans. And then this will get turned into an issue over here that we can see, and we can also reference when we create pull requests. So that's it. That's kind of the start of the project. We created our repo, pushed it up to GitHub. We know that we at least have a bare bones Rails app that we can run inside of Docker. And we've created uh, some tasks that we're going to work on in discrete chunks. So we can go from start to finish in each one of these things and feel like we're really adding some little piece of value to the application. I realized that this wasn't the most exciting tutorial in the world just because we're laying the groundwork for us actually building things in Rails. But this is actually a very important part of the process when you're building an application. So I hope you enjoyed this glimpse of how I, I would probably start a project. And I hope you're excited to kind of go through the rest of this journey, like flushing out the actual features of the application. Feel free to leave me a comment uh, on YouTube or on Facebook or any social media platform. But uh, let me know what you think about these tutorials. Obviously, this is the first one, so you can't have too many thoughts about the Rails series. But just uh, give me your feedback. It, it definitely does help me to steer the ship I hope you like this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.